Hello and welcome to this video tutorial demonstrating how to draw ERDs in UML notation. We are going to be making use of diagrams.net today and that is the new name of draw.io which you might already be familiar with. There is a desktop version of this. If you wanted to, you could download it by clicking the download button. But for this tutorial, we are going to make use of the online version. So I'm clicking start so it can load. What we are seeing here today, you can apply as is to the desktop version because it works exactly the same. So I'm going to go ahead and click create new diagram. And here is the first important gotcha in this process. Do not choose the entity relationship diagram template. It uses cross foot notation and we want to use UML. So it is just going to confuse you to no end. Stick to blank diagram that will enable us to do what we need to do. So we are choosing blank diagram. Off screen where you can't see it, it is not prompting me to choose a file location. And there we go. Right, so the plan is that we are going to recreate the small diagram that you see on the left here. And we are going to do it in UML. So let's collapse all these other categories and stick just to the UML category. It has several useful tools for us. And the first that we need is a class. When you draw a, an ERD in UML, you actually make use of a class. The one you are looking for is not the one with a method. It is the one that has only fields. So let's go ahead and add our first entity. I am going to call it station. And let's just recreate everything that we have there already. So I am going to add the primary key, which is going to be the station ID. If you have been following along with the example on our website, then you would know that this is actually a space station that we are talking about here. Right, so we have now used all three of these default entries that were created together with a class. The question is, how do we add another one? Well, we make use of this item. It's called item, item one and it is used for attributes. So I'm just going to drag it where I want it to go. And then I'm going to call it time. There we go. We have created our first entity. Let's also quickly create star system. This is also something that we need, even though this is not a super exciting entity to represent a relationship that we need that second entity. It only has a primary key, so let's create that store system ID is the primary key here. Then I'm just going to delete these extra fields that we are not using. So I'm clicking on them and pressing delete. And there we go. All right, great. So we have entered these down. Now let's add the relationship. I'm going to use a component called association. Association is actually the proper UML term for what we are doing here. And the other reason is it's also a component I really like the visual look of. So let us connect that association up to both of the entities. And what I like about this is it has these two labels that we can use for our multiplicities. Those two labels are connected to these endpoints. So because we have snapped that relationship to the entity, if we move the entity around, that label will go along as well. That makes it really easy to keep things together if you have to move entities. So I really like this. Plus, it reminds you that something has to go there. This parent and child doesn't look right, so it will remind you visually that there's something that you still need to do. Let's just reposition them a little bit. So I'm just dragging it and then pressing Alt as I drag so that it will allow me to actually move it pixel by pixel. I'm going to just do the same for this child one as well. And there we are. Right, so we are just creating a visual representation here of this association. So it doesn't matter as much for the final diagram, which side is parent and which side is child. Right, on the station side, we see zero to many. No, too many. There we go. And on the store system side, we have one to one. And there we go. We have added successfully our multiplicities. Now we need to add the name of the relationship. 
and the direction in which you read the name. The component I really like to use for that is a message. So I'm going to drag on message. It is an arrow that has a name, so that is why it is useful. Now we can drag it so it becomes vertical. Let's just check the direction again. The station is located in a store system. Yep, that makes sense. So dragging this level a bit this way is located in is the name of the relationship. Maybe we can reposition the level a bit more this way. And drag the relationship name a little bit closer. And there we go. We have drawn successfully the whole diagram. But there's more that you can do to this diagram. I like my diagrams a little bit more colorful. So instead of leaving it black and white, I prefer to add some color to them. Let's stick more or less to what I had before. So station was yellow. Let's make it yellow again. And star system was bluish. Let's make it blue. There we go. But this only changes the outline and the heading. It doesn't actually change this inside area as well. To change that, you select the entity and you choose lane color. To add a lane color of white, we're going to add a lane color of white for this one as well. So you will notice if you look really closely, the grid lines are no longer shining through, so this is no longer transparent. Now, what I also like to do is to just add a bit of a shadow that just gives the thing a nice look as well doesn't add by any value to, or any information to it, but it really does look your, make your diagram look a little bit nicer. From this point, we can then go ahead and actually export the diagram, see what it looks like as an exported file. So I'm going to go and export it. I'm going to select a PNG file that is lossless, so that is going to give you the best export. And I am just going to leave the settings as default. And I am going to save it to my device. Let's have a look and see what that looks like. And here we go, the completed diagram exported as a PNG file. I hope this tutorial has been useful to you and I hope to see many pretty diagrams created with diagrams.net.